Okay. A sophisticated rant about Armored Core 6. All right. Oh, baby. I'm excited. Hey, I'm just ending here without any script or notes, which is quite rare for... Oh, what a surprise. Join the club. <laughs> ...for me to do, because I just want to talk about Armored Core. Yeah. There is a lot that could be said. There is a lot that should be said. And I am a guy who talks. It's a good game. I can do this. When Armored Core started getting close to its release and it started picking up more and more attention, I noticed that the hype behind this game was all over the place. There were a lot of people who simply had no idea what this game is or what it is. I had no idea. I just went off of what everyone was saying. I saw the trailers. You know, the thing that got me was the, the fucking assault boost. All right. Just regular assault boosting towards shit is it's just awesome. All right. And the sound design in this game, even more cool. You know, everything is either bassy or really explosive. The visuals are awesome it's about or what genre it even is and then there were other people who were overly hyped because this was a game by from software of course it's gonna be a so i never played any from software games this was actually my first from software game and am i in a way no okay um yeah this is my first souls like game unless you consider uh monster hunter world a souls like game well, in which case then, yeah, but I haven't played any Dark Souls or Demon Souls or Sekiro or Neo or anything like that. So this is like my first and thank God, because this game is awesome. Yeah, masterpiece. Well, I did finish the game. What do you think? And then I played it again. And from Yeah, you played it again. All the early reviews, it really seemed like this is going to be another masterpiece, another Elden Ring, but with mechs. Well, some people got disappointed that this is actually a whole different genre. Although on the gameplay side, there is still a lot of classic from software design. But right. more importantly, people started nitpicking a thing. I also never played any Armored Core 1 through 5 before this. This is my first intro to Armored Core series, period. Every now and then. Funnily enough, one of those things was the graphics, which I know that everyone wants to keep pushing for Unreal Engine 5 and... I mean, sure, you know, everyone wants like a slightly better graphics and blah, blah, blah. And I, I can't argue against it, but what they came out with it on my computer, and I don't even have that... I have an old ass computer. I got a 2080. Okay. Uh, and uh, what's my processor? Like an i9-9900? And the monitor is like a some BenQ FPS monitor, like 1080, 240 refresh rate. And I think the game looked awesome. All right. I juiced the, the, the graphics out. I bumped the, the little refresh, the frames up to 120, and I thought it looked great. And I guess apparently there are people that still say the game looked like trash. Well, fuck those people, dude. The game looked good. Whatever is gonna burn our computers, but I'll be honest, every game has a threshold, and if it goes above the threshold, great. If it stays there, hey, the game is just fine. People need to realize that gameplay is king. Gameplay yeah. is always carrying everything. Fun fact, this is actually how Nintendo designs their games. Apparently, sometimes they just replace everything with pixels, and if the gameplay mechanics are still fun, that's when they start pushing for graphics. Yeah. Here, I can tell you everything is totally fine. Yeah. There are gonna be some scenes where you're gonna be blown away. So no, I don't believe From Software's engine is falling behind. So let's actually focus on the gameplay. This is where the... You remember back in the day, like 10, 15 years ago, like PS3, Xbox 360, how in the beginning of the console, when the console first came out, the games looked a certain way, but towards the end of the, the generation of the console, the game started looking way better, but it's still the same console. I think that's kind of what is happening here. They're trying to squeeze out every ounce of optimization, that the graphics or, or whatever engine that they can, whatever engine they're using, and they're using everything to the best of their ability. And I think that's what's happening. Core of the game is. You see, as it is with any combat-based From Software game, the, the combat blade. is stellar. It is yeah. snappy, it is fluid, it is easily readable, 
okay the, the easily readable part is like this to me all right it's like that it's, it depends all right the, um i did my first playthrough on controller and the camera speed was about seven and in retrospect i probably could have bumped it up to like eight or nine because sh honestly certain enemies like named enemies acs bosses they just move too damn quick all right and yeah you can hard lock but when they just zip around above you or below you or behind you your hard lock is ripped off and you're just and then you're and once your hard lock is ripped off you're you're taking a bunch of missiles to the face you can't see because of visual clutter and then the see seemingly the enemy just disappeared all right so you're doing this with your stick and me i was playing on six or seven and i'm just like huh 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 all right i mean i, I was able to like trudge through it but the, it could have it, it was probably a skill issue to be honest <laughs> but whatever i am doing like a second playthrough on mk and i will say bumping a bumping up the, the your mouse speed oh my god it feels so much better even though at first people will have no idea what's going on yeah and it is by far the best part of the game i saw that most people are going for heavy mechs with giant machine guns and rocket Yes, the heavy mech double gat songbird builds are the easy mode of the game. And I did that for a majority of the playthrough on my first time. And I think it was fine. It launchers and stuff. I just went for speed. I built a lightweight mech that was zipping around all over the place with two shotguns. Nice. Sure, I died the moment I got hit, but I had so much fun. Yeah. And that's a really strong point of this game. Yeah. You can make anything from fast robots to chunky robots and but i will say there does come a little bit of a skill issue and the learning curve that comes with it because the stats are kind of like when you open when you go to the stats page on all the uh what do you call it in your assembly menu thing and you open up like all the the big stat menu and you hit the contextual help to try to read what each stat does. I wasn't really used to doing that in a lot, in any Souls games. I didn't know that's what you were supposed to do or whatever. I don't know if any other Souls games do that, have that little contextual help thing to try to figure out, oh, this stat does this, that stat does that. Um, but I just didn't do that. I just looked at a build on, like on a video or something and was like, oh, that's popular. That's, that's what's getting everybody through. Oh, okay, great. So, you know, I got through the game and now I'm feeling a little bit more confident. I'm reading the stats a little bit more. I'm understanding. And now on the second playthrough, I'm a little bit more creative with my builds. All right. And the longer you play, the longer the options just keep piling up. So both yeah. on the combat and on the customization of that combat, it's a big W. Yeah. So far, this would match all the high scores. Mm -hmm. But then as you keep playing, you might notice a flaw every now and then. Yeah. After you jump into the game, you are sent on a mission. These missions are decently varied. Sometimes yeah. you infiltrate a base, sometimes you are defending something, sometimes it is a boss fight. Yes, this is a From Software game. And the boss fights are by far the Ooh, best hoops. parts of this game. Every time there was a boss fight, I had a blast. Yeah. This game really knows how to sell you mech fights. Oh, especially yeah. if it is a one-on-one -on -one duel. But oh, after yeah. you are done with the missions, you always get messages from the different characters. Yeah. So you sit there. This part was kind of underwhelming, even though this is where the, the bulk of the story happens in your garage. Uh, you know, what I would have liked at least... You remember in uh, Metal Gear, what they did with the radio? Like, this is obviously some sort of like... See, it's got like the sound only right here, and you have the, the people that are in the call, you could have had some sort of, um, what do you call it? Like picture of the person, the picture, Handler Walter, the picture, the face of G1 Michigan, and then your person, that, you know, and even if you have like your own picture, you could have had a little screen where you customize your own character and their face stuff. So they, at least they come across as like a picture because when you're, the story is being told through just words, there's nothing wrong with that but it is a little, um, it, it kind of removed me because I just, 
Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I just was spam next. I was like next, next, next. I did I did hear like a good considerable portion of the game to the point where I was kind of <laughs> set aside myself when I heard uh, the handler was voiced by Jiren from Dragon Ball. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. <laughs> but it does, it is, it, I wasn't really as immersed, in, immersed in the story because there weren't any like faces or whatever right here. They could have done that. And you listen. And after you yeah. sit through the conversation, which resulted from the last mission, you may then also get a new message, which will foreshadow a future mission. So yeah. you sit there and uh, you listen. And that's only if you get one message. <laughs> Sometimes you get two. So you sit yeah. there and uh, you listen. You listen. Then after you are done listening and I Granted, the voice acting was great. There wasn't anything wrong with the voice acting. Just, you know, give me a face to look at at least. I'm just sitting there in the garage just oogling my own AC. And in the beginning, that's fine. But after a while, it's like, okay. <laughs> after you customize your mech after every mission, you can then go on to the next mission. So you click on it and you get a briefing. Yep. Which makes you feel like you are in a mech warrior army or the corporation, really. Which means you're going to sit there and listen. Yeah. See, this is something that kind of threw me off guard. Yeah. This game has a very weird structure for delivering lore. Now, don't get me wrong. The lore of Armored Core is very deep. But goddamn, you're not gonna get to it unless you really dig. Yeah. From Software was always amazing at delivering stories naturally without any words. In Elden Ring, you just go through the world, you don't care about any NPCs, and you just get story. Be it through environment, through enemies, through the abilities you get, or through the gear you find. So to me, it was a surprise that for Armored Core, they did the exact That's a good looking mech. Instead of always teasing the story by showing you things around, here, people just talk. Yeah. And they talk a lot, which wouldn't necessarily be bad on its own. But the issue is that when people talk, there is nothing on screen. Yeah. It always shows you the two icons of the two people talking or mm -hmm. just one icon if it is just one person talking to you and then a little wave showing you that they are talking. And yeah. that is their story delivery. Now, of course, yeah, you bullshit. will have some impactful missions and some impactful boss fights that will deliver amazing stories on their own. But still, the main part of getting stories is sitting there and listening, which resulted in something interesting. This is a From Software game where most people actually skip the story. And I'm not just making this up. Go around, ask people, I did. some streamers. You'll see that no one really cares about the story. And I assume it's- And I actually want to care about the story, okay? I wanted to, but you gotta give me something to look at. I, like I am essentially playing Dungeons and Dragons and trying to imagine this shit happening, but from a video game. This is like the polar opposites of the two spectrums. You have super immersive, great gameplay, and then when it gets to the story part, I'm, I'm back to like D and D. I have to close my eyes and imagine everything happening. And it's not even anything really, uh, at least in D and D there's like kind of, it's like, there's like some social RP bullshit that you can go through. But this, this is just like, you're in a more or less in the garage, you're in the office, you're chilling, you're getting briefed, debriefed, just going around and. I mean, you're like office work, paperwork, more or less. I'm just like, I'm, I'm catching Z's. It's really just because the game is not pushing you into engaging with it. So as an example, I'm going to tell you how I would have done this if I had infinite budget and I oh, was infinite a budget. Well, yeah. developer. I think at minimum, they could have added the faces like Metal Gear or whatever on each side. Or maybe do it like a Discord call or something, you know, but jazz it up. You know how Metal Gear had that green hue to everybody's faces and everything like kind of moved a little bit. <laughs> uh, none of which are true. 
Imagine if instead of spawning in the middle of the mission, you spawned a little bit further away from the main point of conflict. All you right. would drop down and then you would have to travel to that point. Now the movement in this game is already really good, so moving around yeah. is actually part of the fun. Yeah. But as you're traveling... I mean, to be fair, all you would do if you're going to do it like that, you would just AB boost to the... You, you, you just assault boost to the point of the mission start, so... ...to that point, the briefing could be played on your UI there. Yeah. What if instead of listening to the briefing before you got onto the mission, you had it on your UI as you played the game? That way, you would get the story while you are playing the game, which would make you engage with it. Oh, yeah. With the system they have right now, people's brains just go AFK. And also, this is a very unfortunate side effect on the pacing. For the most part, unless you find a boss and you get stuck there for like an hour or two, uh -huh. you're gonna go on a mission. That mission is gonna be very short. I'm talking about like five minutes. And then after the mission, you go back and you sit through four minutes of conversation. Yeah. Then you get into another mission, another five minutes, you go back, another four minutes of listening. Mm -hmm. There are some cases where you just don't get any messages and you just go from a mission to mission. Right. But usually, there is a lot of talking that just breaks the pacing a bit. Not yeah. to mention that it is a shame that those missions are really quite short. But you see... When he says something like that, I kind of think of Red Dead, either Red Dead Redemption, one or two, doesn't matter, or what do you call it? Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You know, in, in RDR, you're, you're just sitting there on your horse and you got your little boys with you. You know, you're just galloping somewhere and then you're doing like exposition. And then once you're done with the exposition, it's like, okay, mission start, go. And then likewise on Black Flag, a lot of the exposition can be done while you're at the helm of your ship and people are just talking to you like your first mate or whatever. They're, they're just sitting there talking to you. And once you get to the island, okay, there's that. We're ready. Let's go. They could have done something like that. So far, I'm being very critical, right? Well, let me tell you, in my opinion, this game is a very solid 8 out of 10. I still believe most people who gave it 10 out of 10 were really hyped on From Software, and maybe after they finished it, they sobered up a little bit. I don't believe this game is as perfect as something like Elden Ring. But 8 is an absolute minimum, you cannot go below that. But if you like Max, it's gonna be a 9 out of 10. If you really like anime Max and all the fights and all the cool... <laughs> Everything that the game has to offer, it's gonna be a 10. Anyway, as I said, I'm being quite critical, right? This game totally has some kind of a master plan yeah. because those are rookie mistake designs. Well, Ooh, you ate that that's one. exactly what it is. There is a very good reason why this game actually has a bad pacing and why the story delivery is just there in conversations during missions. You see, if you look at the system they are using, it is very clearly a system that was used in the 90s, back when every game had to be divided into levels. Back hmm. then, it was yeah. mostly done because it was a hardware limitation. You had to cut the levels into parts because of memory. So, why are they using it here? Why are they not using a semi-open world system like something like Mass Effect? Wouldn't that feel a lot better since the mechs are oh, all about yeah. traveling around? Okay, so with Mass Effect, you go on a mission, you go on a planet, you do the mission, then you come back to your ship, then you talk to all your your crew, you get a little bit of exposition, some story. Yeah, I probably could have seen something like that. That would have also been another, a better way to do it instead of just going back to your garage and just listening. Well, that's because Armored Core came up with a new kind of story mechanic. You see, after you beat the game, you don't beat the game. And I'm not yeah. talking about, yeah, there is a new game plus. Of course you didn't beat the game. You have to play it again. No, you don't get it. After you beat the game, you actually are not finished. As it is, the game would be quite short. I think I beat it in like 10 hours, which for a $60 game would not be a lot. So what's going on here? Well, you see, after you beat the game the first time, mm -hmm. what happened is that the game gave you context. And this is where things get really cool. You see, even the people who skipped all the story or didn't pay attention at all, they will know about the different characters because at the very least, they fought them as bosses. Yeah. They got context from the first playthrough even if they didn't pay attention. Which means that when you play the second time as New Game Plus, 
you will suddenly know what all the characters are from the very beginning. So they will not be just saying random names. No, you know what that guy is gonna do by the end of the story. Which, under normal circumstances, is cool, but it could get a little bit boring, right? It's gonna be the same story again, nothing new. Well, not quite. Because Armored Core actually has story decisions. That's right, sometimes you get decision missions. Sometimes when you pick one mission, something else is gonna happen for the other mission. So yeah. when you play through the game the first time, you're gonna make some decisions, and when you play again, you're gonna make other decisions, right? It all makes sense. WRONG! From Software are geniuses. What? It is true that the second time you play it, you are more likely to make different decisions so you can see the other bosses that you didn't see before. But on top oh. of this, during all the missions when something special was not happening, every now and then From Software changes something. It oh. might be an extra line from a character, something they didn't say before because you didn't have the context. Why would they tell you something you wouldn't understand? Uh -oh. Well, now you know about the world, so they can go into greater detail without confusing you too much. Mm -hmm. But also, in the middle of some missions, they just give you a decision. Right there. On... Oh yeah, I did this one. I'm not too far into the next playthrough or whatever, but... Yeah, I think... What did I do? I don't even remember what I did the first time. This, this, this menu didn't even pop up the first time. It's just, go. And you got your your allies, and then this, I, this menu popped up, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I'm like, "Oh, this is a a decision thing," and because there's like another dude or whatever here trying to uh, persuade you to turn on like your your little allies right here, and if you accept it, these guys are actually insanely hard to beat. <laughs> I was taking back especially that little tank fuck up there with the double songbirds fuck me dude on the spot they ask you hey do you want to continue with this mission the way you did the first time or do you want to shuffle it up and this is how armored core hooks you yeah on new game plus when you beat the game the first time you do not beat the game you only learn the context of this game and you pick up the gameplay mechanics so you can rush through yeah, it the second time. But when you go through it the second time, the game will actively try to change the route. It will alter the story. It will show you new paths. And suddenly, even though the destination may be similar, the way you get there is vastly different. It is different. The crazy thing is, people who normally play this game will not get this. Most people will probably beat the game and then leave it there but it is when you decide to play it more that the game shows you what it's capable of not only are there more oh he cut it he cut it he cut it because he probably died he took too long to kill the tank bitch and those motherfuckers heal okay and he had a lightweight mech so i don't even know if he actually beat that level or he had to go back into the garage and change some shit around because he realized it was too too hard because cause that, honestly, the game is really balanced when it comes to 1v1, but the moment it becomes 2v1, the shit gets really exponentially tougher, okay? Okay, so, yeah. Just a, a thing. <laughs> New bosses the second time you play it. And I mean, not just recallers or reuses, it is just different bosses. But also, apparently, there is a really cool thing with the endings. I'm not gonna spoil anything, okay. but just like Thank it is you. in something like Elden Ring, there are multiple choices for the ending. But without spoilers, and I really mean no spoilers because I haven't seen it myself, apparently you need to get one ending, then the second ending on the second playthrough, and then you are gonna unlock the third ending. Because Ooh. again, this game is playing around context. By getting both endings, you're gonna get the context of the whole world, and so suddenly, you can change things. Yeah. Again, I haven't seen it myself yet, but I'm getting ready for what the grand finale actually is gonna be. And you should too, because if you have this game and you haven't played it three times, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. Are you preparing for Starfield? No. Absolutely yeah, most not. Of you are preparing for Starfield. No. But if you haven't played this game, don't play Starfield, but play this first. Okay, yes. play this first. It's a really cool game. And yeah, I just really wanted to talk about this because this game is incredible. It is fluid, it is fun, it is great, but it does have a flaw. I still think the pacing of the story 
is it's nowhere dog near shit. as good as it's actually dog shit. other games. Where the story just comes to you naturally, even if you don't care. Here, the pacing is not great, but it's because all the story is a setup for what it can deliver to you in the future. By which I don't mean DLCs, I literally just mean New Game Plus. I hope so they yeah, come out with this DLCs. Is my rant about Armored Core. I probably angered some people by nah. mentioning that this is not a perfect game, but I still think it is a great one for yeah. one simple reason. This is probably one of, if not the best mech games to date. I mean, if you like the concept of mechs going really fast, then yes. But if you don't like it, well, then no. And it, it's awesome having four weapons, okay? And having a bunch of different types of legs. If they come out with some DLC, give me some new legs. Give me some new pieces. Give me some new guns. Give me some new shit, all right? That's what I want. I might be crazy, but I don't think I have ever seen a mech game that actually went viral. True. And even if you consider Titanfall a mech game, the Titanfall mechs are, uh, fail com comparatively to the Armored Core 6 mechs, all right? And I love fucking Titanfall, okay? But if you want to compare mechs to mechs, hey, the AC mechs, they just shit on the Titanfall mechs, okay, dude? Oh, that's it? All right. Dang, that was a banger. That was good. I like that. Uh, Yeah, that crit hit the nail on the head Uh, without doing anything spoilery. So thank you for that. And yeah, it, it's a good game. Uh, I was waiting to try to watch something on what someone else thought about it. And it didn't fail me. So pretty much thinks the same thing that I do for the most part. Um, yeah, I'm still grinding away on, uh, the new game plus. And then after that, maybe I'll give a, a, the third playthrough a shot, but yeah, uh, that's about it. All right. So, uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. So take it easy later.